All right, hey, what's up guys, Gratuitous here. I have been using FabFilter plugins since 2012, and I have had the most enjoyable experience making music with FL Studio for workflow, right? For, you know, FL Studio has the amazing beat making workflow, but FabFilter gives you the tools to have full control over your audio. In this video, I wanna walk you through what is the best way to go to purchase FabFilter plugins. And I'm recommending to you guys the mastering bundle all right. And if you're more of a content creator, then you might want to look into the pro bundle. But if you notice here, the first four plugins stay the same. OK, so the mastering bundle gives you all the core components. Now, if you can't afford a bundle, I would suggest just pro Q3. This is going to give you by far the most fab filter experience out of all the plugins. The next plugin is pro MB. This is a multi band compressor. So the way how I use it is I just have a template I've created. I use, I create four bands. You can click and drag. So you just have your threshold, just like normal. You have your ratio, like normal attack and release. What makes pro MB really, really special though, is it has the range knob. So you can be more aggressive on your threshold and more aggressive on your ratio, and you can get in the perfect blend without it sounding too compressed and fab filter just makes it so intuitive. I highly recommend pro MB after pro Q. Now I quickly want to talk about the essentials bundle because someone asked me a question and they said, well, what about the essentials? Well, again, you're not getting pro MB and you're not getting the limiter. The mastering bundle gives you all four core plugins, which I highly recommend and use on like a daily basis. So pro DS is just like um, for DSing your voice, you know, your S's. Uh, and then pro G is a gate. You can do a DS and a gate in a multiband compressor. So don't be lured into thinking, oh, I need the DS to do DSing and oh, I need the gate to do the gate. I do like the plugins because they're individual. They're also lightweight and they're used for their intended purpose. Uh, Pro MB is, is a little heavy, like not extremely heavy, but it is, a, you know, I do notice it a little bit more than something like, let's say Pro G, but you can do a gate and you can do DSing, and I'll show you that really quickly. All you have to do is just click here, and wherever the S is, you can go as wide as you want, as narrow as you want. So that is a DSer. To do uh, a gate, you just drag it all the way to the left, all the way to the right. Now this is a single band, all right? So Pro MB allows you to do compression and limiting, all right? So this is compression, this is limiting at 100. Then we have expansion, which is the opposite of compression. Again, you have your ratio to be how aggressive to turn things down, and then a gate is like this. Okay. So a gate is like a limiter and a compressor is like an expander. And anytime you have questions, you can use their help manual. So you just go to help topics. This pops up. You can go to using, and here is all the information on each plugin. So each plugin has, uh, has this, not all their plugins, but most of their plugins, you can click here to go like full screen mode. So let me hop over into uh, the instruments. I want to first actually start with the limiter. This is the first thing I want to show you. It is so powerful. So let me just hit play here and I'll talk over the music. All right. So the industry right now is for the ceiling. We put it to minus one. All right. And this is where you'd leave it. And, um, you know, you can set up your template inside of FL Studio to have this. Okay. Now, to be able to hear the real true effects of limiting, watch this. I'm going to hold down Alt. So let me just click this. I'm going to hold down Alt and drag up. And you're going to see this knob decrease. So this is getting a fair volume comparison on our limiting. Are we benefiting or are we harming? So let's just crank this up. Obviously we're harming, but it's a fair volume comparison. Let's go to before. We can even hear distortion. So 22 is excessive, right? So I'm gonna hold on alt again. And, and again, watch that out knob down here pulling it back, we're going to be able to hear our limiting in like a real world practice. So let's go a little bit more. All right. So we're just kind of getting some of those peaks on like the drum. Go to like 12 and a half or something. All right. So we'll leave it there. So if we're happy with this, again, I'm, I'm using B to go back because we're at minus one and zero. We use A and you can see 12 or almost 13. And so these numbers are different because remember we started at minus one and just double click and I would just go minus one. All right, because now this is your final level. So let's start with Pro Q3 and I wanna show you how powerful this EQ is, okay? So the first thing is you wanna take advantage of the auto gain. When you adjust uh, volume, 
you know, like, so if it wasn't on, volume's being turned down, but because auto gain is enabled, the volume is staying the same. So you can hear, you know, this is quite excessive, but the volume has been relatively the same. So right now it's off. Bring it back on. All right, so again, that's excessive. So we're gonna bring that back, because again, we were minus 19. You also have a scale here that you can um, use, and these are all resizable as well. We can kind of adjust this. So let's say we wanna boost some highs now. So again, you can hear that the auto gain is compensating. We're getting a more even volume. So let's just turn it off and on. So let's say we kind of like the sound, but maybe it's just pushed a little too hard. Let's say we're in the mastering stage. You could just drag. You can now just pull back just a little bit. See how both of them are being adjusted? So watch just a little bit. So we're getting a little bit more brightness and we're just kind of taking out, you know, around here. So without it. Okay, so I'll just copy this. We'll go to A. So now what you can do is you can just solo out instruments, like if something's causing a problem. All right, maybe we just uh, pull it back, let's say. Or you want it up. To create a band, you just double click. So where you click makes a difference. As you can see, I double clicked here, it created a low cut. If you double click here, I believe it creates, uh, so uh, I clicked right here, it created a low shelf, and I over here created a band. All right, so again, you can delete them by clicking here, you can click on them, you can hit the X down here. My favorite thing probably is when I adjust it like this, being able to highlight and move them both, okay? Many times I'm holding down shift, as I'm using this knob for fine tuning. To add compression, you can just do uh, drag down. As you can see, it's happening on both, right? So powerful. You can adjust your cues at the same time. So just the workflow is amazing. Okay, so let's move on to Pro MB. So a multiband compressor is by far like one of your most powerful tools. It is like the secret to mastering. It's the secret to getting that overall tone to a sound. And with Pro MB, I'm just going to load up my template. So this gives me four bands, okay? If I go back to A, so to create a band, you just click. You can uh, just double click anywhere you want. So you can see that they don't have to be attached either. And if they are attached, you can split them. So you just click here and then you, you know, so it's just so powerful. And uh, you click it, you can delete it. So I'm gonna go back to my template. So this is how I use Pro MB, whether I'm mastering, whether I'm working on my voice for you know a video like this, or if I'm using it on an instrument, I just click and drag all the bands. Okay. I actually learned this from Ian Shepard over at productionadvice.co.uk. He talks all about mastering. I've, I've learned a lot from Ian. So you can just treat each band as the same. So you're getting the benefits of compression, but you don't have to treat each band with its own settings because a multi-band compressor can get really overwhelming. So if you just highlight them all and you can just drag down or you can just double click. And again, we have to put minus because we're going down into the threshold because digital audio is from zero, right? And then it goes minus. So let's say we want like minus 36 on our threshold. What I'm trying to say is the range knob is like your mix knob. So if you like the kind of compression, it's just a little bit too much. You just pull it back. Okay, so without it. And again, I just use my scroll wheel on my mouse. Okay, we're just going just a little bit. So I'm just trying to find a fair volume comparison between those two. Okay, so again, not to say I'm happy with the overall sound, but I'm just showing you that that's how fast it is. One other thing I want to say before we move on is you can use sidechain compression on a single band. So this is really powerful if you have a bass line and a kick by clicking expert and just clicking external. Okay, now inside of Pro MB, you have to click the gear cog up here and you go processing and here is the stereo sidechain. So you'd have to make sure you route it on the mixer insert, just like normal sidechain compression, and you'd right click and you would select, in this case, let's say big drum. Okay, so 
this is how you can get compression happening or external sidechain compression happening only on the single band, which means that the kick drum can stand out. The bass ducks in volume just a little bit, but the bass over here would remain the same. And you can even get normal compression going on for that bass at the same time. So, so much flexibility. So let's have a quick look at Pro C2. So this is their single band compressor. I want to talk about the internal filter. So the internal side chain filter. This is so powerful when it comes to mastering. So the biggest problem on a single band compressor in the mastering stage is what is triggering the compressor? Let me hit play and I'll show you. So let's just pull back our settings a lot. So it's the drum and the snare is usually triggering this compressor. Okay, so Pro C2 as well as Pro C, you just enable it. And so what's happening is you're just telling the compressor we just want you to look from 150 and upwards, and we're going to use that as a reference point for compression. So which means that the drum isn't constantly triggering this compressor, and we're using the more even frequencies. So whatever gets too loud from 200 and above, we're using that to compress. So as you can see, you know, around here, like th th this is what's triggering the compression. A little bit over here, but whatever goes over first, that is what triggers a single band compressor. And it compresses the whole frequency spectrum. So I'll just quickly cover these knobs quickly. So we have a variable knee, which is so powerful. A lot of compressors sometimes only come with just like a switch between hard and soft. You have your threshold ratio. Your range knob is so special. It's kind of like a mix knob, okay? You can adjust like your display here for a smaller, uh, you know, look at it doesn't have to be big. You could also adjust your sizing down here as well. You have your different styles. I don't use this too much, uh, but it is there. Um, I believe that this is very similar probably to, um, again, uh, the Fruity Limiter. I want to talk about this compared to Pro C in just a second. So you also have your attack, your release, and you have a hold. Okay, so this is why I want to talk about the Fruity Limiter. So the Fruity Limiter calls it sustain. And so it just holds down that compression a little bit longer than normal, which is a very, very cool feature. I really do think FL Studio plugins are very, very complex if you know how to use them, all right? You even get different curves, which I would assume is very similar to like the different styles. Like, you know, it's just how the audio reacts to the compression. And then there's also the auto gain, all right? So sometimes I use this, sometimes I don't. I find that Pro Q3's auto gain works a little bit better, but you can use it, and really how I use FabFilter plugins a lot is I use my number pad. For those who watch my FL Studio courses, you know that I always use the number pad. Double click, you know, minus one. And it's all right there at the number pad, so it's a nice, fast workflow. Uh, also on the outer rings is where you can adjust the stereo, so the side, you know, if you want to reduce it, or if you want to reduce the mid, the, the mono content of a sound. So the mastering bundle gives you all the core tools I recommend. If you can only afford one plugin, then check out their Pro Q3. When Pro Q was first released, it was just like an EQ. When Pro Q2 came out, you know, more features came. And now with Pro Q3, again, now you can even uh, have like dynamic compression on the band. So it's the outer ring. So again, you can adjust automatic or you can go auto and then you adjust your own threshold. So just keep, keep in mind that uh, you don't have control over an attack and release as well as like a ratio amount either. Uh, they set that for you. But again, you can adjust your threshold or you could just go auto and then this is how aggressive you want it to be. So again, you guys can go to itsgratuitous.com forward slash fab filter and it's going to take you to uh, the plugin boutique page. Again, you guys can look at the pro bundle if you're more of a content creator, but if you're just using FL Studio, I'm telling you the mastering bundle right here is going to give you the best experience, okay? So if you visit that link, I'll also leave the link below this video. I will receive a commission. What I really like when you buy through Plugin Boutique is you uh, often get like um, kind of like cash back. So, so like virtual cash and like tokens. And um, yeah, like so they're, they're an awesome vendor. And uh, there you guys go. So you guys get the Pro MB, the Pro L, the Pro Q, and the Pro C2. I hope you guys enjoy Fab Filter, and I hope me covering this video uh, has shown you how enjoyable it is. And ultimately, the biggest thing is that now you actually get full control over your audio. You guys can always email me at hi at itsgratuitous.com for any questions. I'm an FL Studio trainer, so you guys can also visit my website, itsgratuitous.com. I have tons of courses, books, or again, just feel free to reach out to me, and I'm here to help.